We have two maximalist shoes here on the channel today in this comparison video. Which one is better for you if you are looking at those monster shoes for your running? Let's find out. Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex and in today's video we're comparing two maximalist shoes, the New Balance Fresh Foam More V4 and the Hoka Bondi 8. The two shoes are really those, you know, super maximalist, super cushioned uh, shoes. As you can see, the two of them have those like super, you know, thick midsoles, you know, those shoes that you are looking at if you want to save your legs, if you want to have that extra bit of cushion, that deep cushion, that's the type of shoes you're looking at. So this battle is really for you. If you are looking at these two shoes, they were not sent by the same retailer to us. Running Warehouse in the US, link in the description, and Pro Direct running in the UK, but shipping globally, so also link in the description. Go check them out. Thanks a lot because it helps us if you purchase with those links. Weight 360 grams, 350 grams, very close. Stack height in the heel 33 millimeters, 35 millimeters. I know the Bondi looks a bit more, but it has some quite high side walls and that is a bit the, the reason why it looks higher than it is. Only, thir only 33. Four millimeters drop on the two, so very similar and that's also why the comparison is, is interesting here. Width, if you want to see the specific numbers for the four, four foot width, mid foot width and heel width, just go on the website, the Shoe Super Tool. The two are really, really, really wide platforms as you can see. The more before is slightly wider than the Bondi, but the two are like top of the of the range in terms of width. Geometer score, we're looking at, um, it's not Profly, but the EVA base midsole on the Bondi is ranked at 36.1 on the Geometer scale, and the one on the more before is ranked at 34.3. Um, so slightly softer, and indeed it feels a bit softer. Price point, we're looking at 160 euros, 150 dollars for the more, and 170 euros, 165 dollars for the Bondi 8. Similar price point, the more is a bit, is a bit more competitive. Um, so what's good, what's not, and so on. Let's look at the uppers very quickly. Here I would say that um, the Bondi is very, um, is very plush and it has a bit more of that inherent comfort, especially the tongue is very, very plush, very, um, very cushy, very, it feels like a pillow on top of your, of your feet. Um, and it's very nice, a bit less so on the, on the more. I do prefer the tongue of the more because I don't like very, very uh, plush tongues, but I think if you're looking at that maximized experience, you may be interested in something like the tongue of the, of the Bondi. The heel is slightly pliable on the Bondi, a bit more so on the, on the more. Two insoles are removable if you want to put your own orthotics. And the shoes are, maybe not yet, but should be available in wide sizes. Uh, the two of them, so if you have wide feet, these are two good options if you're looking again at those maximized shoes. In the forefoot, I prefer the Bondi's upper, which is a bit uh, thinner and that um, jacquard type of mesh is let's say more pliable, but at the same time it is structured so it doesn't collapse on, on top of your, of your feet. It's, it's a nice upper on the more, there's nothing wrong about it. I think the, the Hoka one is slightly more breathable, slightly thinner, slightly more pleasant against your feet, if that makes sense. So let's give it here to the, to the Bondi, but the two uppers are, let's say, similar. If you, if you want some plushness, and I think you may want some plushness if you're looking at these, uh, these shoes in this category, the Bondi is a bit more plush in terms of upper. Midsole and ride, four millimeters on the two shoes, so you get that lower drop type of experience with the two, the, the same drop that you had on the More V3. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, or just check the shoe super tool if you want to compare the More V4 and the More V3. Uh, but four millimeters, it works really well, the four millimeters, if you are um, a midfoot forward striker, of course, naturally. If you are not, and you are more of a heel midfoot striker, it works well but better on the Bondi because it has a bit of that, a bit more roll and you can really take advantage of that heel strike and move forward. The more doesn't have that, but it has something else which the Bondi doesn't have, the plushness of the, of the landing if you are a heel uh, to midfoot striker. So roll from the heel towards the midfoot and more of that, you know, sinking in plushness here on the, um, on the moor. Overall, the, the ride of the moor is a bit softer, a bit, it feels more cushioned. The two shoes are super cushioned, but it feels a bit more cushioned because you have more compression with the foam here on the moor. You have a bit more cushion for sure especially if you are a heel to midfoot striker. If you are more of that um, midfoot forefoot striker, it doesn't feel 
that cushioned. It feels similar to the Bondi because the Bondi has some decent cushioning in the forefoot, but if you are a midfoot forefoot striker, the two shoes will will ride quite similarly in terms of cushion. Now, if you are, you know, more of that uh, cadence runner, increasing your cadence, I think again the Bondi may work a bit better because of the clunkiness. I would experience being a cadence runner with this shoe. I'm not, I'm a stride runner, and so I think the more works a bit better for me here because I can, you know, use more of that stomping type of, um, of a running style here with the more compared to the Bondi that doesn't quite respond as well to my stomping running, stomping, you know, uh, pushing on the ground here in the forefoot. It doesn't react quite as well as, as the more. But the two shoes are, are um, working well you know, independently of your foot strike. I think they're the type of shoes that can adapt quite well to you and your running style, especially at those lower paces, uh, daily training paces, where um, you will find yourself at ease with the two if you are looking for that specific ride and geometry, if you are looking for a bit more plushness, a bit more, you know, compression in the foam, that's here. If you want the plushness in the upper and more of the roll here in the, um, in the uh, midsole geometry, that's more here with the Bondi. Outsoles, nothing to write home about. I was a bit disappointed with the outsole of the Bondi, I must say. I didn't experience them more in similar conditions to the Bondi. The Bondi on some greasy roads and, you know, wet pavement felt a little insecure, um, surprisingly so. You know, nothing to, to write home about. I think the uh, durability may be a bit better on the Bondi, that being said, compared to the more, which has a slightly thinner um, outsole coverage, I think will be a little less durable, but the two shoes will go past six, seven, eight hundred kilometers. 700, I think, is a good uh, place for the two. So around, uh, you know, 300 miles, I think, three to 400 miles for the two shoes. Good durability. Price point, I think, is a, is a touch high for the Bondi, for what you are getting, especially compared to the Bondi X, which is like the plated version of the Bondi. The difference is not that, that big. It's a better, you know, positioning in terms of price for uh, the more in the maximize category. So again, something you may want to consider if you are looking at the two shoes. If you have questions about these two shoes, let me know in the comments. I will answer to all of you as soon as I can. I'm trying to do that all the time, but sometimes I take a bit more time. So uh, forgive me if you don't have the answer straight away, but you will have one eventually at some point. Enjoy your run today, guys. Enjoy your ride and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.